Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome back to another Hazel Devlog. So this week, I thought I would talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing with Hazel over the next month or so and what our kind of larger scale goals were. This was coming up a lot on the Discord over the last week. And uh, I don't think I... Did I do a Devlog last week? Was that the Bloom one? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll leave the last the last Devlog linked up there in case you want to check it out. Basically, it was just me talking about how I've added Bloom and Emission and all that stuff to Hazel. And I guess following on from that kind of stuff, I really needed to do a lot of work with Hazel's material system because up until now, what we've basically been doing is just kind of editing materials that were imported directly from the mesh and we weren't able to actually create materials as assets and then be able to like save them as separate files and you know drag on existing materials from like the content browser onto entities and onto meshes and stuff like that so that is all kind of done and uh, that's kind of what today's video is going to be about but in general before we get into that kind of stuff I want to talk a little bit about like what is gonna happen over the next month or two with Hazel and my kind of direction for it overall longer term as well. So first of all, as you guys know, um, I've been building Hazel for a while. It's been a little bit over two years. We have somewhat of like a Hazel core team filled with contributors um, who have contributed various parts to the engine. The engine is growing at a pretty nice rate and all of us are having fun with it. But the question that keeps popping up a lot from a lot of different people is, but like, what is your goal with Hazel? Why are you making a game engine? You know, are you trying to compete with Unreal or Unity? Like what is going on here? And I have like addressed this question before. I'll leave a video up there. I actually don't know if that video is still relevant and if my opinions have changed because it is like at least a year old. But the idea is that like, no, like, you know, we're not trying to necessarily compete with Unity or Unreal. Um, my end goal with Hazel is to be able to create content with it. And I think I've said that before, like I want to be able to literally use it as a platform for me to like create games and other kind of uh, experiences, we'll say. Um, you know, just like, like a game developer might pick up Unity and use that to make something and then the game is kind of the result of that. The game is like that kind of artwork that they've made. You know, for me, it's just that, but I'm building my own platform to make art on. And that's kind of what's happening with Hazel. So like, I'm not planning to ever really sell Hazel. I'm not planning to like, you know, commercialize the actual game engine. It's like, I'm, I am planning to hopefully release some games with it, but that's kind of not really the point. And then the other side of it is obviously like, I want to use it as an educational platform to teach game engines and graphics and all of that kind of stuff. And a good example of that is we looked at Bloom last time and a lot of you wanted me to show the kind of in-depth process of how Bloom works. And so I'm gonna make a video on that and obviously Hazel is gonna be the platform upon which I can show that. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. That and then also the game engine series. Now up until like now I wanna say, we have been jamming in so many features into Hazel. Like, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning, I'm filled with ideas, I'm filled with anxiety of like, oh man, we have to have this and we have to have that and we have to jam this in and that in and, you know, why don't we have this yet? Or I'll see something cool in a YouTube video that someone's made in Unreal or Unity and I'll be like, man, I wish Hazel had that. And then I'll like, I'll. it's very easy to get kind of overwhelmed. But I think that we are literally at the point now where Hazel is more than capable of making a large, a large variety of games. I mean, we can, you know, render 3D graphics, write C Sharp scripts for interaction. You know, we have physics, we have audio, we have like a runtime. We have all of these things that you can use to make a game that it's easy to kind of get caught up with, you know, playing AAA games that are coming out and then being like, oh, but we don't have global illumination. So I can't make a game. Which of course is ridiculous because of course you can make a game without that. You don't need all of these new features. And in fact, um, I think that it's really useful to set limitations on yourself to force you to be creative in other ways. I really enjoyed the time when I made a game in one hour using Hazel. I have that video linked up there in case you want to check it out. Where Hazel, that was like using the public kind of game engine series version of Hazel. Where Hazel was so stripped down at that point, it was basically like a little framework. And so I remember in that video, like I didn't have Bloom um, 
and, and I needed the triangles to glow. And so I had to just go into Photoshop and, you know, create a texture that had like, um, you know, some kind of uh, glow effect on it. And then I could tint that using a shader. Like, you know, the result is almost the same as if I had had Bloom, like it's not that different, but I was forced to kind of be creative and think outside the box for that specific example, because Hazel just didn't have those features. And I think that I'm getting a little bit too concerned with like, whether or not we have this or whether or not we have that. And then I need to just take a step back and realize, well, actually we have all we really need to make a game at the moment. So why don't we focus on refining that experience and actually creating some content with Hazel and then maybe we can get back to the more kind of cooler features later. In fact, I've actually even hired someone who's working with me in the office right now to basically work on making games and other content with Hazel. Because I truly believe that Hazel is at the point where we can start making content with it, we can start making games with it, but I'm just so busy making like YouTube videos and working on Hazel's core technology that I don't even have that much time to use it. So having someone to kind of do that is I think really cool. And so over the next like month or two probably, I'm going to be focusing on not really adding new like feature features to Hazel, but refining Hazel's existing experience. So making making it a joy to develop games in Hazel instead of like, you know, having all of these list of little minor things that wouldn't take more than a day to add, but having them kind of be missing and thus not really being able to either make a game at all or like, you know, struggle in certain areas of making the game or just, you know, pulling your hair out the whole time because you can't undo anything. And to be honest, like as much as the kind of graphics rendering side of me really wants to add more like stuff to the renderer or play around with that, there's also something extremely satisfying about just going back over the work you've done and just refining it. Because I guess you already know that everything works. It's just about optimizing it. It's just about optimizing the experience, you know, adding little icons everywhere. Just, you know, it's, it's in a way it's easy. And for, I think for me, you know, it's it has been stressful at times working on Hazel because a lot of the things that I attempt to do, like, I don't know if they're gonna work or not. And if they don't work, I feel like I've wasted so much time where I could have actually made some extra videos or, you know, implemented a, you know, fixed something in Hazel or made it a better experience. But instead I've spent all my time trying to, you know, do this and it wasn't even worth it, which I don't know. I think I need to relax a little bit, but that's honestly how I feel at times. It's actually kind of fun watching uh, the games being made in the background. Anyway, all of that aside, let's dive in and take a look at some of the new material uh, features, I guess, that have uh, now been introduced into Hazel. So I just have a little basic scene here. This is nothing really that special. Um, and I'm gonna show you like the material workflow. And again, this isn't like groundbreaking, but it didn't exist in Hazel before and it is now here, which I think is pretty exciting. So let's take a look. So um, the idea is that at the moment, if we just select this existing entity, uh, what I've done is I've set up a directionalized skylight and we have this like test scene, which is this. Now the test scene is actually made up of five different sub meshes. There's the wall, there's the ground, there's these three objects here. And uh, you can see over here in the properties panel, the mesh component actually has this new materials kind of uh, area that didn't used to exist before. And this is kind of similar to what you might expect to see like in Unity. We have basically like a wall, sphere, cone, cube, ground. These are the names of the materials within Blender. And obviously they've kind of been imported because you can see this here. If I was to open this uh, FBX file, which is really being rendered here in Blender, then we would be able to see, you know, these materials having been created in, in Blender. And so we're seeing them here. But the thing is we can't really edit them. Uh, I mean, we can technically, if I open up this materials panel here, you can see the materials. And if I click on like sphere, you know, I can actually change the sphere color. Um, but that's editing like the direct kind of materials, which you sh really probably shouldn't do because, you know, you, sh you might as well just kind of make the material the way you want it in Blender if you want it, then import it. But then if you want to have dynamic materials or you want to reset the materials within Hazel itself, then you should just create a material and drag it into this material slot. And that's kind of the workflow that we expect. So if I come over here into this materials place over here, you'll see that we have a few materials here. So like, um, you know, green emission, uh, if I double click, um, it opens up the material editor. I'm going to move it. Uh, I guess I'll pop it over here because, uh, the face cam is in the way over there, but basically this material editor, um, 
is the kind of editor for this particular asset. Now at the moment it doesn't actually display which asset is being edited, but if I select Hazel Text, you can see it switches to something else. So if we go back to like green emission, you'll see it's just a green material with like an emission value of four, roughness value of 0.4. If I drag this in to like, I don't know, let's just make the cube emit. So if I drag it into material three, which is that cube material, you can see now we have that emissive material there. And uh, I can actually go over here and obviously play with like the emission, um, play with like the color, all of that stuff is fine because it's all like, you know, it's all there. Um, this kind of material is linked now to this material. Now you'll notice there's also a little bit of an X here. If I press that, it's going to revert to using the meshes material. So whatever material was imported with the mesh, we're now going to be using that. So let's kind of drag that back in. And you can see we have this uh, emissive material. So that's all fine. Um, and also this material itself will be all serialized and saved. At the moment, the icon is just that. I made this like in Photoshop in five minutes, but I want to uh, basically have like a ren you know, a rendered sphere with that material that we can just display as an icon, like a thumbnail here, um, kind of like the engines usually do it. I can also open this externally. And if I do, well, hold on, let me kind of drag this over here. And then you can see what this material actually is. So it's called green emission H material for hazel material. And this is what it's actually storing. So we have like an albedo color, which you saw there. Um, you know, when I edit this kind of stuff, it will automatically serialize when the editing has been finished. Um, and then, uh, you know, we also have these maps here. So albedo map, normal map, metalness map, and roughness map, because we can, of course, drag in some sort of texture. So. Uh, let's see, where would this be? We have like, um, I think inside textures, bricks, there's like this kind of brick material. So maybe let's, let's um, you know what, let's make a new material and I'll show you how that works. So if we go into materials, right click new material, and then I can call it something like, uh, let's just make this like the, the floor maybe. I mean, I guess we've got a ground material, but I'll call it floor, I'll double click on it to open it here. Let's make it white so it doesn't tint our texture. And then I will go into textures, bricks, and we have these um, bricks that I think I got from texturehaven.com. So we have like the diffuse, I can just drag that in. And then you can see now we've got that diffuse. If I hover over this, it'll tell me where it is. Uh, and let's just apply it to the ground. So I'll just drag it into ground. And of course, um, I just tried to drag the texture into ground for some reason, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's go back to materials. And then we have uh, our floor material, which I would, will drag into ground. So now you can see that we have that actual uh, um, texture there. And if I open this externally, you can see that we now have the asset handle for that particular albedo map serialized to this floor. So we can, of course, you know, save this and relaunch it. And as expected, everything's there. You know, it's funny hearing me say this because of course it would save, why wouldn't it save? But obviously the work for it to save needs to have been done. So me as a software engineer, as a developer going into this, knowing that like, okay, we've done this and this and this and this. I kind of want to explain that during a devlog, but then someone watching this who's just like a user might be like, you had to add saving, like that's not, not just done automatically, like why wouldn't it be? Um, but anyway, and then if we go back to, you know, that bricks, obviously we can drag in like normal maps. And then we have these kind of weird normal maps. This really is not supposed to be this big, this texture. Um, and then, you know, we have like a roughness map as well. Um, and then that's kind of uh, now our, I guess, brick texture. So there you go. And then obviously, you know, I can take that asset and I can apply it to anything else. I can, you know, control it and tint it and do whatever I want with it. And it all looks kind of nice. So that's kind of uh, the idea. And then obviously you can clear these. I don't know if I'll keep them uh, in the same kind of way as they are, but with those little X's there, but you know, we can edit these materials um, however you like. And there's also like a C Sharp API to be able to access them from the scripts and manipulate them live uh, as you might want to do if you want like certain colors to change during like the runtime. As a quick little uh, other thing that I'll show, I have we have this like asset manager panel, which um, again, I will drag, you know what, let's just keep it here maybe, or I'll drag it here. Um, this asset manager panel uh, basically shows everything that the asset manager sees. So the asset manager has a whole lot of stuff here. And so if I take a look at, um, you know, one of these materials, they will exist within this asset manager. So here's a quick little example. Um, you know, I mean, we had the floor, we looked at the floor, um, actually got rid of the texture that was in the floor. But if we drag in like a texture into uh, the floor, I'll go back and I'll drag in that diffuse. Um, and then we take a look at 
the actual file itself. So the file uses this albedo map. If I paste that albedo map here, you can see what it actually maps to. So it's it's easy to kind of be able to look at you know how the asset registry actually sees all of this stuff, and then you can like diagnose issues with missing with missing references or whatever other stuff, um, including uh, you know how like materials, you know they they themselves are actual. Um, assets as well. So you can see, I can see a bunch of like, well, this is just me searching for the word material. So it's going to come up with materials, but then also other stuff that might not be a material necessarily, but has the word material in it. Um, but then if I take a look at like, I don't know, we made like a green emission material, you can see that it is just a hazel asset like everything else, it's got a handle. And so anything that refers to that particular handle can refer to this. And it's cool to have this kind of indirection because it also means that we can, you know, we can do a lot of things with that handle. That handle doesn't have to be loaded all the time. That handle could be rewired to point to some other material. We can asynchronously load things and then just, you know, use that handle when it's valid and when it's not just ignore it, you know, use a default kind of missing material or just nothing at all. Um, you know, there's so many things we can kind of do with this like hot reloading. There's, you know, having that kind of system and it's been in place for a while inside Hazel. It's just not something that I've really talked about. Um, but I just, <laughs> I guess I felt like talking about it now. So, um, so yeah, just a little bit of a look at, at how kind of materials work, uh, inside Hazel. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget. You can also help support the development of Hazel and all of my YouTube videos and everything that I do here on YouTube by going to patreon.com slash the channel. You'll also also get access to everything you're seeing here. In fact, I pushed all of these material uh, changes like earlier today, so they're all kind of live. So I hope they work properly, but we'll find out soon enough. Huge thank you as always to everyone who does help support the development of Hazel. Of course, we, we wouldn't be here doing all this stuff if it wasn't for you guys. So huge thank you. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the next devlog. I am working on that Bloom video. I am actually going to make it, I promise. Um, I need to find the time to do that amongst all of the other busy things that I'm doing. But other than that, uh, yeah, over the next like few months, maybe not that long, maybe like a month or so, I am going to hardcore focus on improving the Hazel experience, improving everything we've got, optimizing, you know, making all of this stuff as smooth as possible. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.